Hello, and it is good to see you for education every day. Now, today I'm starting a new series on a mathematical education, and you will not only be learning very important concepts in mathematics that you can use for algebra, geometry, calculus, trigonometry, you will also be learning how to play music and what is the connection between mathematics and the music. Very beautiful thing. Now, anyway, let us start talking about it. A uh, mathematical concept of a function. I'm sure you have probably at this point seen the symbols f of x. Well, we are going to talk specifically what it is meaning, what it is uh, describing, okay? And very simply, math functions are machines. And every machine has an input, something that you put into the machine, and it has output, what the machine does or what it produces for you, given specific input, okay? So, look at the uh, picture of machine I have down here. Do you see the, the first part here? There's something going inside the function. What is going inside the function is called the input. Okay, and hopefully you see this symbol right here. This is actually an X, all right? So once you put the X inside the function, the function will do something. It might do anything, but it might it's going to be doing something, all right? That something is called the F. It is called the function rule, okay? Specifically, it is called the rule, all right? And then once it does its rule, it will put something out. And what it is putting out is this f of x. That is the output. And the f of x, that is same thing as y. Okay, so very easy to remember. When you're first learning math, you start with x, and then you get a y as a result out of that, right? So this is same thing. We're just building upon it, right? So now what is the definition of function? Well, a, a function is a relation where every input, wait, which one is input? Is it x or y? It is x. Every input or x value has exactly one output. And remember, output is which one, x or y? It is y. It is the y value. So every x value needs to be paired with exactly one y value. So instead of saying has, let us say is paired with, is paired with exactly one y value, right? It is saying the same thing. Now, let me show you example of car horn as function. Hello, this is Professor Boris. Okay, so what is input or what is output? Okay, so you see the car horn has an input. What do you need to put it in to make sure the function works? That is the button. When you push the button, one specific thing will happen, okay? It is paired with exactly one output of the function. And what is that output? That output is the honk sound, okay? It is the honk. There is only one honk, there is only one sound, only one output that is happening. When you push the button, you get honk as a result. Input is when I push the horn. What is output? Oh, the sound. Okay, so now I want you to pause the video and I want you to think about, look around your room, okay? What is a function? What is a machine around you? And what is the input? What is the output? Okay, now I'm assuming that you are back. One uh, very simple example that I think about is a toaster. Okay, when you go out into kitchen, you want to make a quick snack, you get toaster, right? What do you put inside the toaster? Well, it could be many things, but one thing is you put in bread. And after you put in bread, you get one specific output. It does not turn into chicken. It does not turn into uh, mashed potatoes and gravy. It does not turn into borscht. It turns into one thing. That output is toast. So you put bread as input inside the toaster machine, and what does it put out for you? It puts out toast. Very simple. Okay, let me show you another example. This is actually dog's favorite example of function. This is what we call furbo. F-U-R-B-O. And look, Ace is trying, he knows what this is going to mean. So he's trying to sniff it, but input is actually on phone application. 
Okay, so I need to go to my phone application. I show you right here. And I press this button. This is actually camera. And look, Ace is trying to sniff it. He's trying to find it. But this is only input. Input is pressing this button. So I must press this button. And let's see what output is. Oh, look. Treats have been output for him. So when I press this button, the treats throw all over the floor for him. So you see the uh, example of Furbo machine, what is input? Well, input is, again, that uh, phone button. Okay, you go into application and you press the button that sends signal to the machine, the Furbo machine. And what is the output? What does it do for you? Well, it sends out treats. Okay, it sends out many treats to the dog, right? So you press button, only one specific output is paired with that. You push button, treats are dispensed. This is how the one input happens as exactly one output all right now actually this is good example of a more complicated type of function that we will be learning in future videos that is actually called composite function okay so i'm not even going to talk about it yet because i want you to stay tuned with me this is called a composite function and we will be talking about that so very shortly okay so let us continue your body has many, many functions to making it work, okay? So, look at this. When you, when you put something inside your body, that is what we are calling the input, all right? You put food inside your body. This is the machine aspect of it. This is when the absorption happens. This is when food doing something for you. It is becoming your skin, becoming your muscles, making you very big, strong, very smart, helping you with brain activity. So, this is the function... This is the F part of it, all right? And then what is the output? Well, when it is all said and done, this is what is being put out. I do not know why man is just laying by this stuff here. This is very disgusting to me. But this is what we call the output, okay? And in this example, it is the poop, right? That is the output, right? You put something in, you must get something out. And everything that you eat has very specific, only one type of output. It does not make more, does not make less. Very specific. Okay? Okay, for the next example, take very deep breath. And let it out. Okay, so this is example of function, right? Uh, the inhalation is what is going in, that is the input. And then, of course, when you breathe out, you are exhaling. That is the output. But, of course, you cannot really see much of this on land. So, let us take a trip underwater and watch a scuba diver breathe. <laughs> Now, can you notice that the scuba diver, you hear sound whenever scuba diver is taking a breath, and then whenever he releases breath, you see bubbles brrr, everywhere. Okay, great time. And as I told you before, mathematics is language of science. It is language of universe. So, let's take a little bit of a glance at something that you will see in chemistry class or biology class and show you that it is all mathematics at the center. Uh, cellular respiration. That is what happens. That is how your each of the cells in your body are getting the energy that uh, makes you do exactly it is what you do. All right. So cellular respiration. What are the inputs? What are the outputs? Well, these are the inputs. This one, uh, do you know? It is glucose or simply the same thing as sugar. That is what you eat in. Um, and then you also have the Oxygen, that is O2, probably know that one. So do you see how arrow is going this direction? Just like it would in mathematical function. That is meaning that these are the outputs. So this one is an output that is carbon dioxide. And in fact, it, it is a waste product. So that is carbon dioxide. And also, uh, 
you have water released as a waste product. And you can feel this for yourself when you breathe into your hands. And you can feel uh, your hands feeling wet because you are breathing water out there. Okay? Now, question. Is respiration a math function? Let us erase this here to give you some space to think. Okay, well, actually, I spent about five minutes trying to explain this to you, and I decided, no, it's a better idea. Just look up video on balancing chemical equations to learn this stuff. I just give you the answer, okay? So, actually, this is a function, and it is because of balancing chemical equations, which you would be learning in a chemistry class. So, let me just show you what the answer is. We need to have this equation balanced. So, there. We, let me write that a little bit better. Could we do that, please? Okay, so we would need to have a six of the oxygens, six of the carbon dioxides, and we would have six of the waters. How that would um, work out then is that, look on left side, we have six carbons, and on the right side, we are having six carbons. On the left side, we have 12 hydrogens, and 6 times 2 is 12 hydrogens on the right side. So, hydrogen is balanced as well. And then we have to um, add up the numbers together. We have 6 oxygens plus 6 times 2 is 12 oxygens. So, that is uh, 18 oxygens. And on the right side, we are having 6 times 2 is 12, plus uh, 6 times 1, that would just be 6. So again, we are having 18 oxygens. Now, of course, this you, you're learning a lot more about this in chemistry class. I'm just showing you that math is the center of the sciences. And because of uh, balancing chemical equations, this is a very good example of a function. Each of the input molecules, each of the input elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, have to go to exactly one output. The uh, law of conservation of mass say that the matter cannot be created nor destroyed in any chemical reaction. So it is just moving around, moving around to different places. It's coming together, making something new and providing energy for your body. Very beautiful, very interesting. Learn more about it on own, okay? Now, very excited to teach you next thing. And you probably see already, I go get nails painted today. Do you see? This is the color of Blue Galaxy. Oh, America is a crazy land. I cannot believe how many men I see getting nails painted um, at the nail salon. But that is okay. This is land of America, right? So my favorite function in the entire world is music. Music. So do you see on the left side, this is a... Um, uh, sound waves being produced by the music. Okay, now I want you to take a moment and think. What is input and what is output for a piano? Okay. You should be writing this stuff down. Just, just write it down, write your idea down right here. And if you get it wrong, that is okay. You just cross it out and write the correct answer. All right. So this, to give you a hint, this is very similar to car horn. Remember, when you press in car horn, you get one distinct sound as a result. Well, this is the same kind of thing. Uh, the input, I'm giving you answer, the input is the key. It is like the button that you press. Each different note on piano has a, uh, each different key on the piano has a different sound associated with it. So you push in the button and it produces a, I'm calling it a unique Unique sound. Unique means different. Everyone gives you unique, different sound. Now, this word sound, this all of this talking about, goodness gracious, all of this uh, sound and all of this English is not very descriptive. There is actually mathematics that we can be using for this. So let me open up internet for you. And I want to show you something very specific. And then I will play piano with you. It will be very, very interesting for you. Okay, so I think we are loading piano key frequencies. Now, you can find this on Wikipedia. This is upload.wikimedia. So this is every note on the piano. This is the keys down here, black and white. And 
Each of them have different name with them. It looks like just letters of alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then it look like if you can see these, all of these numbers here, numbers make you think mathematics. So here we are going. Frequency. What is this idea frequency? Hmm, we will explore this very soon. Okay, so let me just go back to notes paper. We write this down and we keep going. So the unique sound, what this is actually uh, being measured here is the frequency. We can measure this using mathematics. Okay, so let me open the piano real quick for you. That is not it. Ah, babushka, what is piano application doing in your hair? Very beautiful woman, I love her so much. Okay, um, I am back, piano application caused whole computer to crash. I think it is still going a little bit too much, but it is okay, we will do our best. Let me get out of the way here so you can see. And let me just give you example. can see each of the notes that I press it will have different sound and when I press it different way I press it soft I press it loud it still is having the same sound yes? okay now I want to show you Hopefully, as part of this whole mathematical experience, I want you to understanding how to play music as a result of it. Because mathematics is all about teaching you uh, patterns. It is all about understanding the structure and the languages of the universe. And as you can see, already on the piano I have labeled for you letters. It is just like English. It is just like learning ABC. Look at this. I start on the very low note on the piano, that is A. And as you can see, you go up, it is just learning alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then it's starting over. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then it keep doing that again and again and again. Let me start up here because near the middle is where a lot of the beauty happens, okay? We do not want to be too high or necessarily too low. Sometimes we add that in there, but the extremes can only be used in extremely few situations. That is where the beauty comes in. Not here in the middle. Okay? So, um, I start here on A because that is first letter of alphabet. Let us just go up. Let me try it again, okay? If you're knowing music, you know that I just play your first uh, scale, okay? I just play for you A minor. Look at how easy it is. It is just A, B, C, B, E, F, G, A. Many songs, well, every song is written in a unique key. Whether it be A minor, it may be, a, it could be A minor. Look at this, it is already labeled for you. This is the uh, chord of A minor, right? All right, so after you learn your first um, scale, A minor, which is just going up alphabet, this is your first chord, A, C, and E. That is A minor, but just a couple of keys in there, right? We just skip it around. Instead of doing one, all of that, that is too much. So let me just do the one, and the three, and the five. One, two, three, four, five. How about one, two, three, five? Okay? This is very beautiful because it gives you space in the middle. Let me show you. Now, all I'm doing there is playing A minor but I am going up the piano. It's sounding very beautiful. All I'm doing is 
is playing A minor, just different locations on the piano. I play it up here. I'm playing it down here. I'm playing it down there, and it's all sounding good, it's all sounding very different. Okay? Now, A minor giving you that very sad, you know, ooh, it's, it's like... Yes, it is a unique sound characteristic. To sounding a little bit happier, we play major. So I'm not going to go through all the details, but let me tell you what A major is. It's still like that, but now, instead of playing this, let's just go up one. You see, and it, and it changes up there on the top left. It's telling you right here where um, what chord you are playing. This is A minor. Sorry, this is A major. sound more bright, sound more happy. It let us play a song like this. something that happened there. I am playing different locations. These are called octaves. Okay, so I can play different locations on the piano. I can go up higher. I can go up higher. Or I can go very, very low. It's just different sound characteristics, but you see a very simple concept is happening here. Like this song, very simple, and let me even play fewer keys for you, okay? So, i doing this with your right hand, and the left hand, look at this. In right hand, I play the same. when you start adding a little bit more of the energy, a little bit more of... Sometimes you're making mistakes, and mistakes sound very beautiful. That is why you have to start. When you're playing music, when you are doing mathematics, you have to be okay with making mistakes. Mistakes are where the beauty comes in. That is how you learn. That is sometimes when you see the most beautiful part. For example, I'm playing this thing. I may not know to, to play this like this, but it's sounding good. Listen. And then what if I play this one instead? It is just different melodies, different uh, sounds that are coming together. But anyway, let me uh, talk you a little bit about just a simple, simple note. Remember we're learning that the input, this is the key that I'm pressing. I'm pressing this key, it has a specific frequency that is associated with it. Let us talk about what this frequency is. Okay, so we are back on this page that is listing the different frequencies for each key. And the one that is highlighted right here in yellow is the one I have been playing. Okay, it is that sound. So this sound is associated with this frequency of 440 hertz. Maybe you're saying it hurts my brain because you're not knowing what hurts means. So I actually find perfect video. Look at this. Science behind arts, maths behind music, a University of Surrey. Please go watch this video. Very beautiful. Let me just show you first five seconds of it. When a string is plucked, it vibrates at a particular rate. Thank you. 
The rate at which the string vibrates is called the frequency and is usually measured in hertz, the number of vibrations a second. Okay, so that is what the uh, all of these are meaning is this key right here A at 440. When the string is vibrating, it is vibrating at 440 uh, times per second. And we can model it using mathematical equations. Well, all of sound is a wave, as I, as I have told you. And sound is specifically a pressure wave, okay? So you can see what is happening is it is causing vibrations of the molecules in the atmosphere, the gas molecules. They are coming together, hitting themselves, and then they are spreading apart. And your uh, ears and your brain is picking this up as sound, as different music, okay? So this is looking like a curve that is going up, when they are hitting together and then it goes down when the, the particles are spreading apart okay so it goes up and it goes down and it goes up and it goes down and up and down it is kind of like this is the equation right here for the uh, pressure changes in the um, music in the sound it is uh, y equals or we could call it p or f of x equals whatever it might be um, a lot of time we say p for pressure so let me just say that i'm going to call it p of t because it is pressure that is changing as time is going on okay so this t is the x we could call it f of x and then instead of x i would have to change this to an x but i just say t because we're talking about as time is going on the the sound is changing Okay, so this is the general equation right here. It is the sine of 2 pi and then this f. f stands for, what do you think? If you say frequency, you are very smart. Thank you so much. Uh, if you do not say frequency, then you're learning today. The f stands for frequency. So that one that I tell you about right here, 440, I uh, put it in the equation right here. Let us click this and, ooh, that is a graph. And it's looking very similar to the one that we are showing here. Okay, so the frequency is, if it is uh, 440, then this is what the general graph would be looking like. But now down here, I, I have 220. I wonder what 220 means. Going back to this thing right here, these are going down, 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 220. Oh my God, do you see how interesting this is? What key is associated with a 220? It is also A. This is the A that I've been playing, that is 440. This is the 220, that is just one octave, one octave below. And then let us just keep going, just real quick. Uh, what is the next A? What is the next A? 110, this is looking like pattern. If I cut it in half, I get 110. If I cut it in half again, I get 55. And you cut it in half again, you get 27.5. This is pattern that you see. Every time I divide by 2, or if I'm going up, then I keep multiplying by 2 to get up to 220, to get to 440. Very beautiful thing. Do you not see how knowing mathematics might even help you create music? Now, let us see what the graph looks like. Remember, 440, that is the one that I'm playing right here. That is the one that is graphed. Let us see what it sounds like with the 220, or what it looks like. Hmm, very interesting. Now I'm playing them both together. But one thing I also want to explore is this idea of the changing frequencies. 27.5 is the very smallest frequency. It is that sound, very very uh, low sound, that is associated with a graph that it still curves, but it is very very long. It is it is kind of like what happens when I move it up. Oh, okay, okay. Look at how close together it is coming. So let us see this. Now this. Um, 
highest that piano gets to is about 4,186. So let us see. The frequency means that these um, waves are getting closer and closer together. So that is... I'm playing in A. Very high A. So this is what that would look like. Very high sounds have very high frequency. But if I go down very low, like this, that is going to be... Those lower sounds have...